the festival of the, of the dead, the, dead. the cosmic origin of Halloween. Here's the story of Robert Grant Halliburton, oh, okay. who back in 1868 was the first man who wrote and realized this. This is, this is his story. It'll take a few minutes to go through this, but this is significant. Having had rather unexpectedly to visit England in 1859, I thought it advisable to prepare a brief paper for the Society of Antiquaries in London, and accordingly selected customs connected with All Souls Day as a subject. On outlining it in England, it was apparent that the coincidences in the observance of this festival by different nations were much more striking than I had supposed. But a new and most startling fact was discovered when I came to read over the paper I had prepared. Rivero had remarked that it was singular that the festival of the dead amongst the ancient Peruvians was celebrated as the same day by the Spaniards, that is All Souls Day, November 2nd. I had also considered this merely as a curious coincidence, but it was apparent on reading over the results of my investigations that the festival was generally observed in November south as well as north of the equator. A fact so remarkable that it was evident that whatever could be the cause, it must be something hitherto unknown. So from 1859 until the present year, all the leisure that could be spared from public and private engagements has been devoted to the inquiry. It was evident that the uniformity could not have been caused or preserved by any calendar now known to us, and that the festival must originally have been regulated by some visible sign or mark that nature had supplied to our ancestors and the Peruvians. Of course, he goes on, and he discovers that in European calendars, the last day of October, which is today, and the first and second days of November are designated as the festivals of all Halloween, all saints, and all souls. Though they have hitherto never attracted any special attention, and have not been supposed to have been connected with each other, they originally constituted but one commemoration of three days duration, known amongst all nations as the Festival of the, of the Dead, or the Feast of the Ancestors. And it is now, or was formerly observed, at or near the beginning of November by the Peruvians, the Hindus, the Pacific Islanders, the people of the Tonga Islands, the Australians, the ancient Peruvians, the ancient Egyptians, and the northern nations of Europe, and continued for three days among the Japanese, the Hindus, the Australians, the ancient Romans, and the ancient Egyptians. The startling fact that this feast was celebrated among the ancient Peruvians at the same period and on the same day that Christians solemnized the commemoration of the dead, at once drew my attention to the question, how was this uniformity in the time of observance preserved, not only in far distant quarters of the globe, but also through the vast lapse of time since the perversion and the Indo-European first inherited this primeval festival from a common source. So here this should be an indication that what we commemorate today as Halloween has a very ancient, very ancient origin and is not attributable solely to the Celts, who, by the way, of course, is where we generally attribute Samhain or Halloween was their festival of the day. Now here is key connection right here, right here. A remarkable fact, however, was incidentally forced upon my attention that the memory of the deluge was by the Mexicans, the Egyptians, and the Jews associated with the same time of the year, and by the latter two nations as well as in Greece. And with that day, I had found some very peculiar superstitions connected in the Pacific Islands as well as among most ancient nations, among the Aztecs as well as the when that constellation culminated at midnight. Now, when does the Pleiades culminate at midnight now? I don't know. Tonight! No! <laughs> this very night! <laughs> this very night. Now, what was the connection? Let's go here. 
in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, in the 17th day of the month, were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights. Second month, 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up. Here's the Hebrew calendar. Mar Marchesvan, I don't know how you pronounce that, shortened to Chesvan, also called Bull. If you actually read, like, 1 Kings 6, chapter 6, verse 38, they're referring to the actual month, bull, bull, that's the word, bull, like Taurus the bull, right? The second month of the civil calendar, eighth month of the ecclesiastical calendar. Second month, 17th day of the month in the civil calendar corresponds to October 29th in the modern Gregorian calendar. Assuming the second month corresponded to Scorpio, the 17th day would fall on November 10th. Note, tradition associates asserts that King Solomon finished his temple after seven years of work on the 17th day of the second month, thus linking the temple with the deluge and the timing of Noah's entry into the ark. That could be a significant line of research there. In any case, we don't know because of shifting celestial geometries where 4,000 or 5,000 or 6,000 years ago exactly what day the culmination of the Pleiades occurred on. Okay, we know it happened, what now would be in the Gregorian calendar, the end of October or the beginning of November. Um, and from Sir James Fraser, now the deluge was caused by the male waters from the sky, meaning the female waters which issued forth from the ground. The holes in the sky by which the upper waters escaped were made by God when he removed stars out of the constellation of the Pleiades. Now, from somebody observing from the earth, it looks like a tarred meteor shower is falling out of Pleiades, right? Uh, let me show you a graph. We might have to skip over this because this, I believe, is the origin of the devil in the... I've actually shown you this. I saw Satan as a star falling from heaven. <clears throat> and there's lots of depictions in ancient iconography, medieval art, and stuff of these demon-type creatures falling from, from the sky to the earth. And Mayan, this falling demon-type god, is very prolific. Lots of representations. This is, the, this is the diving god with his feet up. These are just a few examples, quick examples. Here you see the falling god right here. Diving figure on a stucco relief in a Kansa, Yucatan. Note rattlesnake glyph on the lower right. See the rattle tail right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's another very, very warm, but it's still the same idea. The, the god falling to earth. The Some of you have seen this, I'm sure. Um, Zantamak falling to earth with star glyphs. Down here is the Mayan iconograph for... The, for the rattlesnake. Okay, now here's where, here's where, this is the critical stuff right here. Written back in by astronomer Stansbury Hagar in 1931, the November meteors in Mayan Mexican tradition. Before the arrival of the first Spaniards in Mexico, over 400 years ago and probably much earlier, the Mexicans told of certain stars called Zontamoc or falling hairs. Of course, there's one of the universal associations with comets, hair and long hair, which fell from heaven to earth with the Lord of the dead. Their fall was commemorated annually in the Kiholi festival said to be held towards the end of October. This festival and the falling of the stars was associated with the end of the world. And this, this is a depiction from the Codex Borgia of Zantamak falling to earth. And the Lord of the Dead governed the festival of the dead preceding the Kiholi, during which the spirits of the dead were supposed to return to earth from the land of souls in the sky. No doubt they were believed to have been accompanied by their deity, whose fall is mentioned in the ritual. On she date of the Mexican Vaticanus and the Borgian and other codices, these stars of the falling hairs are depicted falling from the sky to earth accompanied by many other stars further identified by the conventional star symbols beside them. 
the Vaticanus Codex antedates the entrance of the first Spaniards into Mexico and depicts traditions much older than that date. From these facts, it seems reasonably certain that the Zantamak were November meteors. Now, as it turns out that in Mayan iconography, well, whose falling hair referred to the fiery trails left behind them. But the Mexicans seem to have distinguished between the different meteor groups, for they refer to the fall of Zantamak on the day one eagle, which pertains to Taurus and would seem therefore to refer to the Taurid meteors. Now, if you've been paying attention and not sleeping during our discussion tonight, you should have an appreciation of this possible significance of the Torrid meteor system. Now, here we go back and discover that the ancient Mexicans are consciously making this association between their day of the dead and the Torrid meteors. The end of the world would naturally be associated with the memory of one of the great meteoric showers during November when all the stars seem to fall from the sky. Start to bring it to a close. I will. Now, on this zodiac where you see the rattlesnake, we'll have to go fast here, represents the signs in regular sequence. The position of Taurus is occupied by two panels, the lower of which represents the rattle of the snake. It is Zabek, the rattle asteroidism, our Pleiades. So wherever in the Mayan iconography you see the rattlesnake depicted, that was their symbol for the Pleiades. And this is an analysis of the Hebrew word. The great deluge is mabul, comes from the word bul, bull. See, the association is even embedded in the language. If you go back to the original Hebrew description of the great flood of Noah, you discover that the deluge is referred to by the term mabul, which comes from this. Uh, produced of the earth, produced in a sense of rain, the deluge or the deluge, mabul, the bull, the bull, the earth. Um, here is the night sky as it would look tonight. <clears throat> if you go out and you look to the south, you'll see the plane. Which, let's get oriented here. South would be. Uh, the west house is right seven here. degrees off of the south. Is over so south, south is through this way. Yeah. Okay. So take this and turn it around. We're looking this looking to the south, out this way. All the motion uh, is turning so that the Pleiades, you see here, this line represents the local meridian. What that is, is if we drew a line in space going from the North Pole to the South Pole and it passed over our head, that would be this green line, the local meridian. At midnight, the Pleiades culminates and crosses the local, midnight, the local meridian at midnight on Halloween, okay? And here, and you see here's the Pleiades, and here's Taurus right here, done in yellow. Now here shows the, the Taurid radiant, the Taurid meteor stream with its radiant, almost, almost dead on the Pleiades. So, if what the British neocatastrophists say is true, that what is presently the Taurid system is just a diffuse remnant of what was once a much more vigorous active stream that encountered the earth on a regular basis and was probably witnessed and experienced by ancient peoples and associated with the destruction of the world, now you can begin to see the connection between this particular astronomical event and this date. On this date, all over the ancient world, people celebrated the Day of the Dead. The most likely uh, uh, explanation is that earth has had repeated encounters with the Taurid meteor system and people naturally associated this with a great destruction. We've seen, we've only touched on the highlights of it, but I've shown you that there is evidence to connect the Torrid meteor system with the great deluge that we've been talking about ad nauseum in here, right? And here, I've shown you that even in the biblical account, the dating that's given of the flood of Noah is within a two week period that could coincide exactly with the Torrid, with the, with the peak of the Torrid system the Torrid Meteor Stream. The broom star, the broom sweeps away. Now Halloween, there's a connection between Halloween and brooms, right? Somewhere along there, yes. Somewhere along there, yeah, right? Remember what we described, witches were described as daughters of the devil? Okay, the broom star sweeping away the old. See, some, some medieval depictions even, it even looks like a broom. Now the, broom, the idea of a broom wasn't just the Chinese, but 
And there we have a witch-like cometary apparition destroying the Earth. And now, here's an old legend that was on the History Channel, on the history of Halloween. If you put your clothes on inside out, and so I'm, everybody, I want to do this now before we leave, <laughs> and walk backwards outside on Halloween night, you will see a witch flying in the sky at midnight. People used to believe that witches were the devil. Well, if we go outside, what are what would ancient people have seen flying in the sky at midnight? Comets. Comets. Yes, oh, meteors. fireballs, meteors. They would have seen the torrid stuff. So now, when you think of that witch, I want you to think of this new connection with the witch. The broom, she rides her broom. The association of the witch with the broom. Where did that come from? The idea that a witch rides a broom. <laughs> I thought it was a devil. Well. Why did they change it to a feminine thing on this night? Sorry. What are you saying? That, that <coughs> only only the male half of the population is evil? Well, no, it used to be the falling Lucifer, and now it's the witch. I guess it's equal rights for both sexes. Right? Well, just like in the movie that's coming out, Beowulf, you know, in the Nordic, some of the ancient Norse tales, you know, the monster was a woman, a female. Uh, Tiamat, you know, when Zeus fought, T or uh, Enki fought Tiamat, Tiamat was a great dragon, but she was depicted as a female dragon. And probably the idea comes because of a dragon having offspring. Just like a comet breaking up and essentially creating offspring, see? Haley's Comet, what does that suggest to you? It's pretty cool. Associated with, associated with Halloween? Perhaps a ghost? <laughs> yeah. So, what we're getting at here is you see that Halloween was celebrated, how, what we call Halloween. There was a Day of the Dead or Festival of the Dead celebrated all over the ancient world. It appears, certainly in the case of the Mayans, to be very explicitly associated with the Torrid Meteor Shower, the culmination of the Pleiades at midnight. I skipped over a lot of the stuff taken right out of the Bible. It shows the whole legend of the of the Lucifer falling to earth is almost exactly the same as the Mayan legend of Zantamach falling to the earth. And the Pleiadian connection is also very overt, too, if you know where to look for it. And so what this brings us to is another... Uh, another uh, uh, confirmation that, as has been said, the ancient knowledge is everywhere about us in everyday use. We just, as a rule, read the... don't look beyond the surface of the things that people do habitually all the time without thinking about why do people do this? Why do kids every year dress up, supposedly, I mean mostly as ghosts and witches and werewolves and goblins and all of this, in the original version of it, remember the idea is that the souls of the dead come back to cavort on earth on the eve of the deluge. That's what this is. Halloween was the eve of the great flood, the eve of the event that destroyed the last world. In the original context, one could theorize, and I think very plausibly, that in the original concept, it was the souls of all of those who inhabited the antediluvian world that come out to dance and cavort around on the annual eve of that event to remind the survivors. To remind this and, and to serve as a perpetual reminder for many generations. Assuming, of course, that the original meaning wasn't lost or couldn't be recovered. So there was a lot, as you can see, we skipped through a lot of material. Yes. But... That's basically all of the supporting evidence that I think creates a very convincing picture that this thing that we're doing now, hopefully from now on, when you go out and you think this, you go, okay, there's more to this than meets the eye. What I hope you got is some new insight into the Day of the Dead. That's wonderful. Wow. Thank you.